Second Wind A 1970s BMW R100 destined for Alpine trails. Bikes from Hukiko always make us smile. The motto of the shop is enjoy the good, and that easygoing attitude is reflected in their builds. But that doesn't mean the Dresden-based crew is lazy. Far from it. The guys currently have five projects on the go, and pour considerable amounts of blood and sweat into each bike they wrench on. This BMW R100-7 illustrates our point superbly. On first pass it's raw and unfussy. But look closer, and it's clear that Hukiko have seen to every last Diva Island thrown a few sweet upgrades into the mix along the way. For inspiration, Huka looked to the mighty Hammerhead Shark. It's a curious association that they wax lyrical about on their journal. The gist is that Hammerheads are superior hunters, and that air-cooled beamers have been around as long as sharks. Well go with it, for now. This particular R100 airhead had been around since 1979, and was more than a little worse for wear when Huka got their hands on it. Everything mechanical had to be rebuilt, including the engine, carbs, front suspension, and brakes. Even though they were cracking the motor open, the team opted to keep everything at OEM spec for maximum reliability. They even retained the R100S original airbox, citing it as the best running setup so far for classic boxers. The exhaust system stayed mostly stock too, save for a pair of aftermarket mufflers and a fresh coat of black. When it came to the wiring though, Kuki ripped everything out and started over. The new system now runs off Moto Gadget's new M. Unit Blue, a Bluetooth enabled version of their popular control unit that interfaces with your smartphone. Using Moto Gadget's M. Ride app, you can check diagnostics, configure the system, or switch the bike on just by having your phone close enough. Kuki had an M. Unit Blue in their hands before it officially hit the market, giving them plenty of time to play around. They ended up hiding it and a few other components under the tank, with an anti-gravity lithium-ion battery mounted behind the transmission. With the space under the seat left bare, Huka constructed an abbreviated subframe from steel tubing. It's propped up by a new pair of YSS shocks, and capped off with an Alcantara-clad saddle that's just big enough for two or one plus luggage. There's an LED tail light embedded into the back of the seat, and a neat little aluminum fender mounted straight to the subframe. Up front, Uki have dropped the front forks by just under half an inch, then tuned them for more compression. Brackets were fabricated for a new headlight and turn signals. The full lighting complement includes a truck light LED headlight, along with a pair of LED spotlights for good measure. There's even a tiny front fender, but it's not fitted in all the shots. The cockpit is all new, including the risers, handlebars, throttle, levers and switches. The speedo is from Caso, the master cylinder is from Branca, and the rib grips are a perennial favorite built well incorporated cone fuss. One part that survived the cut was the R100S hefty 24 liter fuel tank. Puka cleaned it up, stripped off the paint and adorned it with a lighting bulb motif before adding clear coat. It's also sporting a handsome custom-made filler cap. Kuki are masters of monochrome, and this boxer wears the uniform well. There's fresh powder coating on the frame and wheels, and the engine's almost completely murdered out. A few little touches round out the package like a new pair of fork boots, and a tiny, virtually invisible H logo on the lower frame. But we're pretty sure most people will skim over all that, and fixate on the tires a set of Continental TKC80S. The good news is that these actually serve a purpose. This bike's destined to spend equal time on tar and dirt. Its owner lives on a small farm in the Austrian Alps, says Hukia. This hammerhead shark will spend its life illuminating dark valleys, and hunting down stock bikes for breakfast. Ah, now it makes sense.